In this video we're going to talk about the gradient of straight lines. So the gradient is pretty much the slope or how steep uh, a line is between two points. So here we've got two points A and B and so what we're interested in is, is how steep this line is. Now that might be slightly um, shallower than if we were to draw one between these two points uh, A and B. Uh, as you can see it's quite it's much more steeper than it is um, between the first one. So that's all the gradient tells us is how steep this slope is. Uh, and using coordinate geometry we can say a straight line is pretty much defined by the, um, two points. Uh, you can only draw a straight line between two points. So if we've got a straight line we can work out the gradient of that line. And using coordinate geometry we talk about rise and run. So the rise between the y values um, will give us the, uh, that length and the uh, the change in x values would be our run. So our gradient um, between a and b uh, is the distance or the difference for the rise divided by the run. So that's probably what we're familiar with. So gradient, rise over run. Mostly we talk about the gradient as the variable m. So you might have m equals rise over run. Um, sometimes you have other variables. You could have a or b and so on. So for the most part, m equals rise over run, or the gradient is rise over run. Now we move into um, coordinate um, uh, geometry, I suppose, um, where we're talking about uh, specific values of a and b. So what we actually have is uh, we've got A as the position of x1, y1, B position x2, y2. So this could be any straight line. Uh, so it could be one that's quite more steep um, or one that goes into the negative values. Uh, so this way or well, this method will work um, if you use the, the formula that we're going to discuss here. So we mentioned briefly that M equals rise over run. So the rise is the difference of the y values. So if we took the y value y2 and subtracted y1, that would give us the distance between those two points. So we're just looking at the vertical distance. So we've got y2 take y1 instead of the rise. And divided by the same idea with the x's, if I take x2, which is our point b, and subtract x1, that will give us the distance between x2 and x1. So x2 take x1. And so we have this nice little formula here. So uh, this can be used for any two coordinates uh, without having to sketch the um, actual line itself. Um, and it'll work whether you've got a positive or negative gradient. You can also say that um, you can swap them around and sometimes you can have y1 take y2. Um, so you can do this, uh, it's just that you have to do the same on the bottom. So x1 take y1. Um, for the most part we use this one, the y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. Um, but you can also have the same idea with the y1 at the front as long as you're consistent. Actually that should be, I don't know, that's, uh, that one there should be an x. Oops, I marked that one up. x2. So there we go. Um, so yes, just be careful with those ones. So let's have a look at some examples here. So example 3. So we've got this line segment uh, crosses at minus 2 down here and positive 2 here. What we're looking for is the gradient. Um, because the graph is already drawn, I would probably go towards this rise over run. So you just say to yourself, how far up have we gone? So we've gone 2 and how far across? And we've gone 2 there. So m 
would be 2 as our rise, divide 2 as our run, so it's just 1. And then if we've got this oops, other line, okay, sloping the other way, and crosses up here at 3, and down here at 2. So start, this one's slightly different, as you can see it slopes the other way, so you've got to be careful with these. Uh, we always move from left to right. So starting at this point here at 3, um, to get to this point down here, we have to go down. Okay, we have to go down by 3. So I say, typically speaking, we go down by minus 3. Okay, and then we go across by 2. Oops. So M would be our rise, which is minus 3 divided by 2, which is how you get the negative answer. So the other way is just to work out the distance in 3 over 2, and then just say to yourself, well, we're sloping this way, so it must be minus. This way is probably a little bit more of a safer option, because uh, it's easy to forget that you're sloping this way, so it's negative. Um, so two little examples there, and finally we've got uh, example 4. So this one's given us two points. We've got the gradient of a line passes through the points 1, 6, and the point minus 3, 7. Now you could plot them on the graph and do the same idea with your rise and run. Uh, what I would tend to do would be use this case here. So if you're given two points, you can just straight you can jump straight into the formula here. So m equals our y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. Uh, thinking about it logically, um, if we're starting as uh, from the left, this minus 3 is the smaller of the two values between 1 and minus 3. So let's label that one as x1, which means that one must be y1, and this one must be x2, uh, oops, y2. So just make sure you label them properly. And so we get y2, which is 6, take y1, which is 7, over x2, which is 1, take x1, which is minus 3. Uh, 6 minus 7 is minus 1. 1 take negative 3 uh, becomes positive 4. So we get minus a quarter for this solution here.